Several people were sitting in the office. A young man with a beard, holding a mug of beer in his hands, asked the girl opposite him in surprise whether it was really possible to get into the world of demons. The girl lowered her head slightly and reported that they had found a way to destroy it, the barrier separating the human and demonic worlds. After this, the girl announced that they were going to send 100 elite heroes to the demon world. Suddenly, that girl turned to that young man as the hero freed, and said that she wanted him, one of the elite warriors, to penetrate the demonic castle and explore it. The girl also noticed that if Fried succeeds, then he needs to kill the demon lord. After this, the girl asked Fried if he agreed to her task. Fried lowered his head and frowned, saying that he agreed, but only if it was for a world in which everyone could live peacefully and happily. The girl immediately broke into a joyful smile and said that she was waiting for Fried to say this. The young man who was sitting next to Fried immediately stood up. The young man pointed a finger at himself and announced in a loud voice that he would also go. The girl agreed and then asked the young man whether it was true that he was Fried's student. The young man struck his chest with his palm and loudly announced that his name was the hero Lyle, Lyle leered. The war between humans and demons began many generations ago. And those who started this war are long dead. Cruelty begets cruelty, and the flame of hatred will never go out. This war is an endless circle of suffering. Fried believed that if he could end this war, even with the slightest hope, he would be putting his life on the line. At this time, Freed, Lyle Leard, and other elite warriors fell into the demon world. Once in the castle of the demon lord, Freed immediately began to fight with one of the demons, that same lord. The demoness also did not lag behind. Freed sharply crossed his swords with the mistress, making a disgusting sound. Then Lyle Leard ran up, attacking the demon lord from the side. A drop of sweat rolled down Freed's face. Freed furrowed his eyebrows and thought to himself that he couldn't just give up since he had to defeat the demon lord. As Freed and the demon lord stepped aside, Lyle Leard shouted loudly, calling for the demon lord to come to him. The demoness immediately attacked Lyle Leard with the words of wishing death for this man. However, tears suddenly appeared in Lyle Leard's eyes, and he screamed loudly, asking the demon lord to stop. However, at that very second Freed ran up to them and put his hand in front of Lyle Leard's face. The demon lord immediately wounded Fried with her sword. Red liquid sprayed like a fountain from Freed's hand. Lyle Leard screamed in horror, calling for his teacher Freed. Fried himself, at this time, looked at his hand and clenched his teeth in pain. Having neutralized Freed, the demon lord pointed her sword in his direction and began to swing her arms, saying that his time had come because Freed could no longer fight with a sword. However, at this time, Freed took out a pistol from the inner pocket of his clothes and grinned, informing him that it was not a sword. Taking out his pistol, Freed immediately began to shoot at the demon lord, but she deftly dodged every bullet. Lyle Leard immediately began to attack, activating his magical abilities. However, the demon lord flew up sharply using a ragnabong. Lyle Leard screamed in surprise, asking about the perfect magic. The demon lord sharply attacked again, screaming for Freed and Lyle Leard to die. Lyle Leard hid behind his teacher Freed and shouted loudly that they were in danger. Freed immediately furrowed his eyebrows and asked Lyle Leard if he was ashamed to use Freed as a shield. Freed then asked Lyle Leard if he didn't care about his teacher. The bomb flew towards Freed and Lyle Leard. However, after a few moments, the thick smoke cleared, and the demon lord saw before her the safe and sound Lyle Leard and Freed. The demon lord furrowed her brows and wondered about the block and whether Freed was able to suppress her attack. After this, the demon lord came to the conclusion that this sacred weapon was beginning to irritate her. The demon lord once again armed herself with her sword and rushed to attack Freed, shouting that she needed to get rid of Freed quickly. However, Lyle Leard suddenly appeared between them and immediately attacked the demon lord, shouting that he would not allow this to happen. However, Freed at the same second activated the barrier, preventing Lyle Leard from attacking, and shouted in a stern voice telling him not to interfere. After this, Freed activated the suppression of the demon lord's powers. The demon lord froze and cursed, then tried to attack Freed again using a technique called Leverden. However, after a few moments, the demon lord screamed very loudly and heart-rendingly from pain and the inability to use her powers due to Freed's suppression. Shifting her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose and baring her teeth, 
the demon lord cursed loudly, calling Fried a very bad person. Freed, at this time, quickly approached the demon lord and attacked her. Lyle Leard opened his mouth in shock and froze. Freed furrowed his brows as he wounded the demon lord with his sword. Spitting out a few drops of red liquid, the demon lord looked tiredly at Freed and swore again, calling him and Lyle Leard, damn invaders. A few moments later, the demon lord lost consciousness and fell to the ground, and a large puddle of red liquid began to form under her. Lyle Leard tilted his head to the side in surprise and asked his teacher Freed if this was really the end. Freed, at this time, was concentrating on wrapping a bandage around his hand and telling Lyle Leard that he had heard that the demon lord had the ability to regenerate. After this, Freed said that before this demon lord could do anything, he needed to destroy her soul. The demon lord's hand trembled. Freed approached the demon lord and prepared to destroy her soul. Freed moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and began to talk about the invaders. Freed believed that they may be invaders for demons, but all this is for the common good. However, Freed suddenly frowned even more and coughed. An instant later, a thin stream of red liquid flowed from Freed's mouth as the young man lowered his head down and saw how a sharp sword pierced him through. Freed turned back and saw Lyle Leard, who was holding that same sword in his hands, continuing to pierce his teacher. Covered with drops of cold sweat from excitement, Lyle Leard breathed heavily and told Freed that if they returned home like this, then Lyle Leard would be considered only a pathetic assistant to the legendary hero Freed. Breaking into a creepy, crazy smile, Lyle Leard said that if the hero Freed dies here, then Lyle Leard will become a hero who has surpassed his teacher and defeated the Demon Lord. Freed furrowed his eyebrows and bared his teeth, angrily calling Lyle Leard's name. Lyle Leard ignored Freed and screamed loudly, attacking his teacher with a technique called Leverden. As soon as everything around began to explode, Lyle Leard screamed loudly, ordering everyone to burn, both Teacher Freed and the Demon Lord. Everyone. Seeing the bright explosion, the transparent demonic skeleton saluted and in a confident voice announced that he confirmed the retreat of the heroes. The large demonic mustachioed pig looked at the stern demoness next to him and asked whether he should kill the rest. Puffing, the demoness stepped aside and refused, citing the fact that they had spent a lot of magical power. The demoness also added that if they caught the eye of these heroes, they would not be able to win. The demonic skeleton agreed, noting that then they were unlikely to withstand the next attack of the heroes. The demoness moved her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose and answered in a firm voice that they should resist and pray that the demon lord would return soon. Sighing, the mustachioed demonic pig called out to that same demon lord in an excited voice, calling her by her name, Eurisha Sama. The demonic skeleton sighed heavily and said in a sad voice that their master was a reckless woman. Then the demonic skeleton began to complain that his stomach hurt. The demonic mustachioed pig noted in an excited voice that their mistress was probably at great risk. Then the demonic mustachioed pig pursed his lips and firmly announced that that demonic skeleton had no belly at all. The demonic skeleton immediately spread his arms to the sides and began to say in an indignant voice that the demonic mustachioed pig looked like a gastronomy expert. The demonic mustachioed pig smiled nervously and asked with irritation whether this was a joke. Suddenly, the demoness bulged her three eyes and screamed loudly, I was surprised. She then ran forward shouting questions about what had happened. The demonic skeleton and the demonic mustachioed pig froze, screaming in surprise and calling out to that same demoness named Stella. Stella shouted sharply that this was the overlord and loudly ordered these demon warriors to call the rest of the warriors for help. The demon lord named Eurisha Sama was injured. Stella quickly ran up the stairs, silently noticing that someone was able to bypass the traps and kill all of Yurishi Sama's guards. However, covered in beads of sweat, Stella also noticed that Yurishi Sama has resurrection magic. Rising upstairs, Stella began to open the huge door, thinking to herself that Yurishi Sama's body and soul, even if they turn to dust, will still be restored here. Opening that door, Stella silently concluded that before the heroes returned, she must have time to restore all the traps and protect the demon lord Yurishu Sama. Going inside, Stella raised her head up and noticed in an admiring voice that the resurrection magic had worked. However, Stella then wondered what kind of magic there was.
Frowning her eyebrows, Stella noticed that this magic was many times stronger than at the maximum stage. However, after a few moments, Stella concluded that this magic was even greater. After a couple of moments, Stella took a closer look at Freed's body floating in the air and loudly shouted the question of who it is, and is it really not Eurisha Sama? Suddenly Freed pulled himself together and straightened himself out, slowly sinking to the ground. A drop of cold sweat rolled down the gloomy Stella's face as she began to wonder whether this young man, meaning Fried, was the enemy of the demon lord Yurishi Sama. Stella didn't understand why this man. Suddenly Freed landed on his haunches and sighed loudly. Freed then looked around and wondered where he was. Surprised, Stella wondered what the young man meant. Stella took a closer look and saw the mark of a demon lord on Freed's hand. Freed was surprised that his clothes were restored, and there was no longer a hole from the sword of his student Lyle Leard. Stella furrowed her eyebrows as she noticed the demon lord's spell on the hero Frieda. Stella began to wonder if the power of Lord Yurishi Sama had really been transferred to this person. Fried continued at this time to examine his body and notice that all his wounds were also healed. Stella decided to herself that this does not change anything, and everything is for the benefit of the demonic family. Stella then knelt down and called out to Fried, calling him master. After this, Stella announced that she was his faithful lieutenant and was here to obediently serve the master. After this, the demoness introduced herself as Stella Azervain. Stella also asked Lord Fried's forgiveness for saying this immediately after his resurrection, but it is very important. Stella Azervain begged Lord Fried to use his power to protect them. After listening to Stella Azerwain, the tense Fried shook his head from side to side, looking around. Then Fried hesitantly approached Stella Azerwain, who was sitting on her lap, and asked her what she was talking about. After this, the young man began to claim that he was a hero named Fried, and not a demon. However, then Fried looked down at his hand and was surprised to notice that the mark of a demon lord had appeared on it. Immediately, Stella Azervain raised her voice and told the surprised Fried that he had been a hero before his death, but had now been reborn as a demon lord. The tense Fried scratched his head and shouted loudly, asking Stella Azervain to wait, and then began to talk about how even if that was the case. However, Stella Azervain immediately interrupted Fried and shouted loudly that this mark is passed on from generation to generation, just like magical power. Then Stella Azervain asked Fried if he really didn't feel his magical power. After this, Stella Azervain reported that Fried's strength was already far superior to that of a human. Fried moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and then suddenly ran towards Stella Azervain and attacked her, shouting for Stella Azervain to shut her mouth. However, Fried suddenly stopped when he saw a powerful flow of his energy, which Stella Azervain had just dodged. Fried froze and looked at his hand in horror. Stella Azervain raised her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose and pressed one hand to her chest, saying that she understood that Lord Fried was in turmoil because he had just been resurrected. However, Stella Azervain also noted that now is not the time to ask questions. Stella Azervain reported that, although they repelled the attack of the heroes, the ruler's castle was in danger because of the spies. Stella Azervain also noted that if they do not stop these infiltrators, then they will be finished, since they will kill them all. Fried irritably clenched his fists and began shouting the question that Stella Azervain was really asking the hero to go over to the side of the demons and fight against people, to which Stella Azervain loudly shouts in response that this is required by the circumstances. Fried froze in shock, realizing to himself that there were no lies in the eyes of Stella Azervain. Fried began to wonder to himself whether everything was really that bad. Suddenly, someone attacked the building in which the hero demon Lord Fried and Stella Azervain were located. Fried grabbed Stella Azervain with lightning speed and protected him from destruction. Looking at the crumbling wall, Fried frowned and said that this was unexpected. After one second, Fried turned blue in shock and froze, cursing under his breath at the realization that he had just helped the demon Stella Azervain. Suddenly, Stella Azervain let out a sigh and called out to Fried. Surprised, Fried looked carefully at the blushing demoness Stella Azervain, who trembled with a nervous smile on her face, and asked the demon lord Fried if he could not stay so close to her. Fried froze and looked at Stella Azervain in surprise for several seconds. After another couple of seconds, Fried blushed sharply and moved a decent distance away from Stella Azervain, simultaneously asking her forgiveness in a loud voice. 
Stella Azarine began to assure Fried that she was simply not used to people. Fried moved closer to Stella Azarwain, but then blushed again. Confusedly adjusting his clothes, Fried wondered what was wrong with him. Fried began to talk out loud about how he blushed because of the demon girl. Suddenly flushed with embarrassment, Stella Azarwain rubbed her third eye and looked forward with it. Stella then reported that they were now fighting against a group of people. Fried furrowed his eyebrows slightly and asked Stella Azarwain how she knew about this. Stella Azarwain formed a bright magical sphere and told Fried to look into it. Fried looked intensely into this sphere and saw through it a huge battlefield where demons were fighting with a group of people. Looking at the people with happy smiles on their faces who were killing demons, Fried, in horror, moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and began to notice out loud that these people were laughing and they were enjoying the killings. Fried thought that these people looked like demons. However, Fried also realized that real demons behave more humanely than people. Stella Azervain lowered her eyes and with sadness in her voice said that all battles here are like this. Fried lowered his head and clenched his fists, thinking about this war. Fried understood that people should fight and kill, but... Suddenly, Demon Lord Fried cursed loudly and hit his forehead with his palm. Fried then told Stella Azarween that, to be honest, all his feelings were mixed up right now. Covered with drops of cold sweat, Fried with a scream in his voice said that he may have turned into a demon, but he cannot close his eyes to such behavior. Stella Azervain froze, her mouth open in surprise. Fried turned on his heels and in a confident voice promised Stella Azarwine, in this case, to stop these people. Stella Azervain pressed her hands to her chest, rejoicing at the decision of the demon lord Fried. Fried immediately hurried towards the fighting. Stella Azervain followed him, forming a magic sphere in front of her. Fried moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and said out loud that he could never have expected things to go this way. Freed hoped that they would believe him if Freed said that he was betrayed by his student Lyle Leard, and Freed was reborn as a demon. In this case, Freed decided to try to stop these people from killing demons. Freed didn't understand how this could even happen. Suddenly, Stella Azervain appeared behind Fried, who called Lord Fried and politely asked him to put on the bone mask. Stella Azervain also said that it would be better if no one knew that Fried was human. Stella Azervain also warned Lord Freed that otherwise the young man would become an enemy of both sides, like the hero who killed the demon lord. Lord Freed repeated the words of Stella Azervain that he would become an enemy and as a hero who betrayed people. Freed concluded that he would have to wear the bone mask and immediately pressed it to his face. Approaching the battlefield, Freed heard the joyful voices of other people about the fact that one of them had already killed the 21st demon. Another young man reported that he already has the 25th demon. The third guy was still dealing with the demon, simultaneously shouting that this was his 24th demon and he would not lose. Twenty-some demon has tried hard to hold back the attack of that young man, starting to tremble from tension. The first young man turned around and shouted to the young man with a cigar in his hand, telling him to finally kill that demoness. The young man grinned and said that then this demoness would become his 25th. The young man attacked the demoness and almost killed her, but suddenly froze and raised his head up. Seeing the demon lord fried in the sky, and Stella Azervain with that same demoness on the side, the young man opened his mouth in shock. Having landed on the ground, Freed asked Stella Azervain whether she would help that demoness. To which Stella Azervain responded with firm consent. While Stella Azervain and another demoness were saving the third, Freed leveled up and announced in a loud voice that the demon lord had already been defeated. Then Fried noticed that the mission of these people was completed. Fried also asked people why they shouldn't back down. One of those elite warriors grinned and asked Freed that he really thought that these people would believe the words of the demon. The young man noticed that even if this is true, they don't care. Another elite warrior smirked and said that Freed was stopping them from playing. Fried immediately asked these young people about the game. One of them sharply attacked Freed, saying that it was a game of who could kill the most demons. Freed immediately dodged. The young man with the cigar froze. The first warrior laughed and concluded out loud that, apparently, Freed was able to dodge. The second, largest in size and most successful in the game, elite warrior also broke into a smile and noticed that Freed was quite strong. Smirking, the second young man asked his friends about assigning five points for killing Demon Freed. 
to which another young man said that the rules should not be changed during the game. The third young man swore and called Fried a bad man. Fried continued to say that killing in war is a common thing. However, Fried immediately began to wonder out loud whether it was possible to enjoy this. Fried also noticed that if these people do not respect their enemies, they become ordinary killers. Fried believed that such people could not even be called warriors, let alone heroes. The third young man began waving his weapon and shouting that they, the heroes, could do whatever they wanted. Fried immediately swore and called that young man a fool who did not understand anything at all. Then Fried screamed very loudly and angrily, releasing his powerful magical energy along with the scream, saying that these young people couldn't even be called people. Everyone immediately froze. Stella Azervain and other demonesses, as well as those elite non-warriors. The third young man moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and angrily muttered through his teeth the question of what kind of nonsense Fried was talking about. Then that young man sharply attacked Fried with a technique called Ondine, simultaneously shouting the question of how Fried dares to talk to the hero like that. Fried did not have time to dodge the attack, but he immediately concluded to himself that the resurrection had incredibly increased his strength, since now Fried would not receive damage even if he touched a sacred weapon that could destroy an entire castle. Looking to the side and seeing other warriors preparing to attack, Fried wondered if he could withstand three of them at a time. Fried suddenly realized that since he was now a demon lord, this meant that he could use his magic. Fried immediately armed himself with a book of spells and made a mental conclusion that, apparently, he could use spells from that very book. Scrooge asshole, so threes of five twos into four one fifty eight starting to leaf through the book, Fried thought to himself that he was not going to kill these young people, but just wanted to knock them out. However, Fried also understood that he had absolutely no idea how powerful this magic was. That same harmful elite warrior immediately shouted to the other people not to give Fried the opportunity to use his magic. Fried himself, at this time, first decided to use a technique called Fireball. Facing that young man's attack, Fried's Fireball released a powerful explosion. Fried froze. Those young people screamed loudly and groaned, lying on the ground and writhing in pain. Surprised, Stella Azarwin noticed that this was incredible. Fried froze with his hand raised in front of him and began to nervously wonder how and what happened. Fried approached Stella Azarwin and asked in a nervous voice whether he had really killed these young people. Stella Azarvain opened her third eye and looked forward with concentration, simultaneously guessing that, apparently, these elite warriors were thrown back strongly by the blast wave. Stella Azarvain also noted that the sacred weapons of these young people were destroyed, so that they would no longer be able to fight. After this, Stella Azarvain smiled broadly, and in a joyful voice noted that, as expected from a ruler who used high magic instantly. Fried reported that in fact it was one of the weakest spells. Suddenly, many demons crowded around Freed, asking in surprise about the new demon lord. Noticing the pattern on Freed's hand, one of these demons confirmed the words of the others, noticing that Freed had a mark. Stella Azervain abruptly grabbed Freed's hand and joyfully called him Lord Sama, then thanked him for saving them. Fried froze, looking in surprise at the demoness Stella Azervain, who thanked him. The other demons also rejoiced, shouting loudly that they were saved and thanking Freed. Fried himself called Stella Azarween by name and asked her to help him. Stella Azarvain burst into a smile and asked Fried that isn't it cool that he, the Lord of Demons, is so admired. Stella Azarween asked Fried in surprise whether he wasn't happy. Fried was silent. Stella Azarvain raised her hand and commanded the rest of the demons to raise the demon Lord Freed. As soon as a bunch of demons lifted Freed off the ground, they shouted joyfully that everything was as expected. Lord Freed was very strong. The demons began to throw Fried up in joy and call him Lord Sama. Discouraged, Fried shouted loudly, asking all these demons what they were doing. Stella Azervain smiled sweetly and looked at the new demon Lord Freed with warmth. Suddenly, the wounded demoness pulled Stella Azervain's clothes with a trembling hand and, calling her Stella Sama, asked her to continue healing her since she still had a hole in her stomach. Stella Azervain immediately asked the demoness for forgiveness and began to heal. At that moment, Stella Azervain was thinking about Frida, a former hero who began to fight on the side of the demons. After a certain period of time, Stella and Fried entered a room. 
Stella thanked Fried for his help, and with a smile on her face, said that until the castle was rebuilt again, this would be Fried's room. Fried himself, looking around, widened his eyes in shock and noticed that there was even a tea set. Stella Azervain reported that, although it is difficult to believe, there is a lot in common between people and demons. Stella fell silent for a while, but then muffled her voice slightly and said that demons respect human culture. While the surprised Fried explored everything and was surprised to notice that there were even books and tools in this room, Stella Azervain said that there are many types of demons, but in general, they are not far from people. Stella Azervain also reported that people often mistakenly believe that all demons are barbarians. However, as Stella believed in reality, most of the hellish creatures are ordinary residents who have a profession, for example, animal husbandry, farming, and the like. Stella noticed that these ordinary hellish residents have been working in this area all their lives. Remembering the words of the previous Yurishi sama that people are invaders, Freed frowned his thick eyebrows and said that from the point of view of demons, people are the real invaders. Suddenly, Stella changed the topic and asked demon Lord Fried how his body was and if there were any problems. Freed smiled slightly and asked Stella Azarween why she was suddenly asking. Stella immediately explained that the magic that was used to revive Fried copied the soul and body of the demon Lord Yurishi and transferred them to another place. Stella Azervain also reported that ordinary magicians would not be able to use such magic. Fried immediately asked Stella Azerween why he was revived then. Stella furrowed her brows slightly and reported that the sacred weapon that Freed possessed seemed to influence the magic. Freed immediately repeated after Stella, saying that, apparently, this was all because of Graham, Freed's sacred weapon. After this, Freed began to tell Stella Azarween that Graham could rewrite any type of magic. Freed called this ability of his sacred weapon a virus. After this, Fried began to wonder out loud whether the virus had made a mistake in its goal and revived Fried as a demon. Stella Azervain chuckled thoughtfully and said that it was possible. Stella then began to talk about how the revival did not go according to plan and reborn Fried incorrectly. Stella believed that they needed to find out the reason for all this. Suddenly, Freed cursed and then thoughtfully scratched his beard, reporting that he had problems with his body. Freed began to thoughtfully report that his body now felt better than before, since his old wounds had also disappeared. Fried concluded by telling Stella Azarween that there was nothing more to it than that. However, Fried immediately began to assume that all this could be due to the fact that Fried was reborn as a demon, but... Fried twirled his index finger in a circle and reported that before he died, every time Fried looked at the demons, some kind of unusual pressure was felt from them, but now Fried began to feel some kind of kinship and closeness from them. Fried thought it was difficult to explain. In saying all this, Fried gave the example of a mustachioed demonic pig, whom Fried had previously seen as creepy and evil, but now as a real kind-hearted and very sympathetic demon. Breaking into a warm smile, Fried said that when everyone began to thank him and rejoice, Fried was incredibly happy. Fried reported that at that moment he felt like a full-fledged demon. Stella closed her eyes and smiled, telling Fried that she was confident that the young man would become a great demon lord. Freed lowered his head and clenched his fist, communicating that, however, being a demon means becoming an enemy of people. Freed also said that he doesn't think this is the right choice for the former hero. Freed went to the window and, looking at it, asked Stella why their demon Lord Eurisha invaded the people first. Freed noticed that if both sides had behaved peacefully, this war could have been avoided. To which Stella briefly replied that Eurisha sama said that it was to protect hell. Glancing again towards the window, Fried clarified with Stella that she really wanted to say that in order to protect this place, it was necessary to kill people. Suddenly, Fried heard a charming harp playing. Opening his eyes, Fried looked around tiredly and, frowning his eyebrows, wondered whether it was really morning already. After that, Fried realized that he had suddenly fallen asleep. Looking out the window, Fried stopped and drops of cold sweat appeared on his face as the young man began to wonder if it was really day. Sighing, Fried concluded that without the sun he had no idea what time it was. Fried decided that he needed to check the area around the castle. Remembering the words of Stella Azarween that if someone found out that Fried was a human, he would immediately become an enemy, Fried confidently said that he definitely needed a mask. Going out into the corridor and wandering around it a little, Fried sighed tiredly, 
not understanding where he was. Freed immediately realized that he did not remember anything in this castle. Suddenly, someone called out to Demon Lord Fried, calling him Your Highness. Freed turned around and saw a joyful demoness waving his hand and wishing him good morning. Approaching that demoness, Fried hesitantly called her yesterday's girl. The demoness blushed slightly and screamed, asking His Highness Fried if he really remembered her. Then this demoness screamed loudly, announcing that her name was Sasim Balgamug, and she was the captain of the fortress guard. Hearing the cry of Sasim Balgamug, the other demonesses immediately approached her and freed. One of them asked in surprise that the lord was really here. Another demoness wished good morning. Sasim Balgamug joyfully turned to His Highness Frid and asked if he would like to go with them to the graves. Sasim Balgamug noticed that everyone would be glad to see the demon Lord Fried. Lord Freed began to speak hesitantly about graves. Arriving at the graves, Sasim Balgamug reported that this was for the sake of their comrades and the former lord. Sasim Balgamug also reported that they want to make solid graves a little later, but have already built a temporary option. Listening to Sasim Balgamug, Freed furrowed his brows, silently concluding that he didn't think it was right for him to pray for the other side's victims. However, with his hands folded in front of him, Freed closed his eyes and prayed with the rest of the demonesses for the victims of their compatriots. As soon as everyone finished praying, Sasim Balgamug exhaled and suggested that everyone get back to work. Hearing this, Freed widened his eyes in shock and asked about work. Freed then began to clarify that it was not true that the wounds of these demons had not yet healed. After this, Freed informed the demons that they had worked hard yesterday, and then the young man asked about how about rest. Hearing this, the demons opened their mouths and bulged their eyes in shock. Fried asked in surprise what it was. Inwardly, His Highness Fried wondered what was wrong with these demons, and if Fried himself had said something suspicious. A moment later, some demons began to shed tears over the fact that His Highness Fried was showing pity for soldiers like them. Sasim Balgamug said in tears that the new Lord Fried was really very kind. Another demoness smiled broadly and said that the new Lord Fried was even very kind. After this, the demons shouted in joy in unison that everything was as expected from their new Lord. Fried himself froze in shock, completely not understanding what was happening. Frowning his eyebrows slightly, Fried thought about the fact that isn't it true that it's normal to rest when you're injured. Fried began to wonder to himself about how demons were treated here in general. Coming out of his thoughts, Freed approached Captain Sasim Balgamug and said that he wanted to ask her something. Surprised by Sas, Balgamug froze, listening carefully to His Highness Frida. The young man began to talk about how the demons worked in such difficult conditions, and they were not even allowed to rest after battles. Freed began to ask Captain Sasim Balgamug about why they still did their job back then, even with such a cruel attitude. Sasim Balgamug reported that her family served the overlords from generation to generation. Sasim Balgamug began to remember the words of her relative that defending the castle of the demon lord was the same as defending hell. That old demon said that protecting hell means protecting all demons. The elderly demon felt it was an honor to work here. Having voiced this to His Highness Fried, Sasim Balgamug reported that this message had been passed down from generation to generation. Clenching her fists, Sasim Balgamug enthusiastically announced that this is why she always keeps these words in her heart and works tirelessly. Sasim Balgamug also confidently shouted that she values her comrades in hell. Listening to all this, another demoness approached Captain Sasim Balgamug and stopped her, asking her that when their salaries were cut, didn't she want to change jobs? Looking at that demoness with a stern look, Sasim Balgamug whispered to her to close her mouth and then in an excited voice, she screamed that everything that was no longer important. After this, the demonesses began to discuss something loudly, screaming and bursting into laughter. His Highness Freed stood nearby and sighed heavily. Suddenly, Freed felt some movement and covered one of the demonesses with himself, shouting to the others to be careful. Stepping aside, the frightened demoness in the hat shouted the question of what it was and whether it was the spirit of the past lord. The demoness immediately fell to her knees and began to ask to forgive them. Sasim Balgamug began to scream in horror, wondering if this was the revenge of the demon Lord Eurisha for the fact that they were complaining about her. The third demoness in horror began to ask for mercy. 
His Highness Freed dropped to one knee in surprise and refused the demonesses, simultaneously reporting that he had already seen this attack. Suddenly, they were attacked again. Captain Sassim Balgamug froze abruptly, her mouth open. Freed grabbed his sword from Sassim Balgamug's sheath and quickly dealt with the large centaur. As soon as Freed dealt with the monster, the demonesses rose from the floor in shock. Sassim Balgamug was surprised that Freed was able to kill such a brute with one rapier. Another demoness looked at the mechanical centaur and asked what it was. Fried immediately reported that this was an automatic sacred weapon. Another demoness immediately asked about the sacred weapon. Fried explained that this is the name of the thing sent to people by the gods in order to fight demons. Fried also explained that people who can use these weapons are called heroes. Hearing this, the demonesses immediately armed themselves and stood in fighting poses as soon as Sassim Balgamug said that this meant that the heroes were nearby. Freed looked away and said that a weapon like this was autonomously controlled, meaning it was not a direct attack. After this, Freed suggested that this sacred weapon was given the command to find and destroy demons. Then Freed took out a book of spells with the words that since the hero's weapon was able to find them, then Freed would also use magic. After these words, Freed spread his arms to the sides and activated the hundredfold homing beam. Seeing Freed's powerful magic, the demonesses sighed with delight. Freed turned to the demons and said that this would stop other such weapons. Then Freed asked to call him if someone was hurt, but for now he would go to Stella. The demonesses admiringly called Lord Freed awesome. A second later, Freed smiled slightly and embarrassedly asked Sassam Balgamug where he should look for Stella. Sassam Balgamug chuckled and quickly explained to Fried where to go. Freed immediately thanked Sassam Balgamug for saving him time. Sassam Balgamug handed Fried something and asked him to take it with him, noting that if the Lord got hungry, he could eat it. Freed unwrapped the food and saw rice balls. The demoness asked the captain in a whisper that the Lord did not require high-quality food. The demon thought it was a little rude. Sassam Balgamug immediately became nervous and asked His Highness Fried for forgiveness. Freed told her not to be afraid and then ate the rice balls and said they were delicious. Adjusting his mask, Friel thanked Sassam Balgamug and promised to repay her for her kindness. To which she replied that it was not worth it because they still had not thanked him properly for saving him. After that, Sassam Balgamug saluted and confidently announced that they would give their all to help Freed. Other demons supported her and shouted loudly that they would work tirelessly. Fried briefly replied that he was glad to hear this and would count on the soldiers. Sassam Balgamug smiled warmly. After some time, Fried met with Stella Azarween. Wishing His Highness good morning, Stella remarked that it was a good sight. Fried asked in surprise about what Stella Azarween saw, to which she said that Fried was not in the room, so she went to look for him. Then Stella smiled warmly and noticed that despite what Fried said yesterday, he still decided to help the demons. Fried chuckled as he asked Stella if she noticed this. Fried looked forward and reported that when he was human, he didn't even think there was a culture or society in hell. Fried was surprised that demons, it turns out, also have a sense of justice and compassion. Knowing all this, Fried announced that he would no longer consider himself a hero. Fried talked about how he couldn't let good beings die. Fried confidently said that this means that he will no longer kill anyone if he can do without it, because even among people there are many who strive to achieve peace in their own way. Stella Azerwain clenched her fists in admiration and called His Highness Frida. Once at the top of the tower, Fried carefully examined everything below and noticed how much destruction there was in just one day. Fried said that they must restore the barrier and castle that the heroes destroyed. Stella Azerwain said that there is a lot of work so it would be better if they call those who know the magic of restoration, but... Repeating the words about the magic of restoration, Fried asked her about whether they have physical labor, or only people have it. To which Stella Azervain said that, at least, the ruler should not deal with these things. Fried, meanwhile, opened the book of spells and began to look for restoration magic. Fried was the first to see runic restoration, whereby any object that has magical power or abilities can be restored by this spell. The second was simply restoration, whereby any object made of natural components could be restored by this spell. After reading this, Fried concluded that, compared to a sacred weapon that aims to destroy, magic has a variety of uses.
After this, Freed activated the magic of restoration, and the castle immediately began to recover. After a certain period of time, Stella Azervain froze in surprise, saying in shock that Lord Freed had restored such a large volume in a couple of seconds. Fried glanced sideways at Stella and asked her not to talk about the fact that he would also start shouting, Hooray! Stella Azervain asked about this in surprise. Fried said it didn't matter. Stella Azervain smiled and said, as expected of their lord. Fried immediately shouted, asking why everyone was saying that. After some time, Freed looked at the map and told Stella Azervain that when he was still a hero, they made five holes in the outer barrier. Freed then announced that they had divided into five teams and headed towards the castle. After this, Freed hesitantly wondered whether everyone in the group in which Freed was was killed, except for Lyle Leard. Frowning his brows, Freed asked Stella if she knew what happened to his four comrades, since Lyle Leard apparently retreated after killing Freed. Poking his index finger at the map, Freed reported that most of the heroes had retreated after the attack, but it seemed that some had set up camp near the holes in the barrier. Freed explained that, in other words, while they were repairing the barrier, they needed to head east and deal with the heroes as well. Freed announced that he would be leaving soon. Stella immediately screamed, asking His Highness Freed that he really meant to say that he would go to the battlefield. Freed frowned and said that he didn't want more soldiers to get hurt. Stella Azervain screamed that this was stupid. Fried asked her if Stella Azerwein really thought he couldn't handle it, to which she asked to let her go with him. Stella Azervain immediately screamed that her abilities had not yet been restored, but Freed could use the demoness as a shield. Freed came closer to Stella and said that he did not know what the previous demon lord was, but poking Stella Azervain with his index finger, Freed said that he never uses her as a shield because that's impossible. Stella Azervain froze in surprise. Fried continued to say in a stern voice that it doesn't matter what happens, but Stella won't even think of risking her life. Fried spoke confidently that survival was their priority. Summing up, Fried shouted that this was an order. Stella Azervain sighed and replied, That's right. Suddenly, Fried looked to the side and, having cooled down a little, announced that he would need Stella Azervain's skill in order to track down the enemies. Fried noted that without Stella Azervain he would lose. After that, the guy hesitantly asked if she could go with him. Stella immediately rejoiced and screamed, answering with firm consent. After some time on the battlefield, one hero smiled evilly and asked about the new lord. The second hero, with a grin on his face, said that the lord knocked out your brothers Alex, but he shouldn't even dream that he could defeat them, the legendary tandem of heroes. However, Freed attacked these heroes with the energy hand spell and quickly defeated them. After this, Freed began to alternate between the runic restoration and energy hand spells several times. After a certain period of time, Freed sighed, announcing that there was one more left. Freed concluded to himself that the difference in strength was much greater than he thought. Stella Azervain thanked Freed for trying so hard. Stella Azerwein then offered the young man a drink and said that he really didn't seem to need help. Looking to the side, Stella Azervain reported that the troops were enjoying this spectacle. Fried smiled and said that they looked like spectators of a movie. Fried also said that he would like them to return, but... Suddenly Freed fell silent when he saw a huge dragon. Stella Azervain calmly turned to his highness and suggested moving on. After sitting on the dragon and flying, Freed said that he had always dreamed of flying on a dragon, but no one told him that the wind would blow so hard. Stella told Freed to hold on as the weather in this area was not very good. Freed immediately put his arm around Stella Azerwein's waist, and she screamed. Freed shouted back, asking if the demoness was okay. To which she hesitantly apologized, saying that for her to sit so close next to a man is already exciting, but when they hug you so tenderly, it's... Suddenly blushing, Stella screamed, wondering what she was even talking about. After this, Stella Azerwein again apologized to his highness. To which Freed said that he didn't really understand what she was talking about, but the demon shouldn't apologize to him so often. Freed said that he considered the demon as his partner, so she should relax. Confused, Stella Azerwein asked about her partner, and then screamed that she didn't deserve such kind words, as it made her even more nervous. The young man asked Stella Azerwein to just call him Freedom, because it would be easier. Stella Azervain began to stutter in shock as she asked about it. 
She then screamed that she wouldn't dare talk to the demon lord like that. Fried suggested that Stella call him that only when they were together. Fried noted that he was not forcing him. Stella Azervain screamed that it wasn't that she was refusing, but... After taking a few breaths, Stella Azervain collected her thoughts and called the lord Fried Sama. Fried chuckled thoughtfully, noticing to himself that they looked more like a couple than partners. Stella Azervain became even more embarrassed and apologized again, saying that she needed some time to get used to it. Fried chuckled and called Stella stubborn. Seeing the huge hero, Stella reported that she saw him, and then asked Fried if they knew each other. To which Fried said that he had never seen him before, but that thug was quite famous among the heroes as an expert in exterminating demons named Bloody Claudio. Claudio also said that he wanted to attack their fortress right now. Fried looked sternly at Claudio and asked what he was doing, because stepping on a dead soldier is... Claudio interrupted Fried and said that he had such a wonderful aura. Claudio believed that Fried would be a great opponent. Smirking, Claudio said that, as a warrior, he challenges Lord Fried to a duel. Fried briefly told Claudio not to call himself a warrior if he didn't even know how to respect his opponents. Claudio picked up the soldier and threw him sharply to the side, shouting that these worms did not deserve his respect. Freed's eyes widened sharply. Claudio growled and attacked Freed, continuing to offer a fight. Freed put his sword in front of him and covered it with magic. Swinging it to the side, Freed looked with concentration in the direction of the bloody Claudio, who shouted that his sacred weapon, Arendite, cuts everything it touches. Claudio noticed that it doesn't matter whether Fried is the master or not, because as soon as the weapon touches him, Fried is dead. Fried dodged and landed on his knees, communicating that this is a cutting weapon with a long attack range, but it is inferior in defense. Fried placed what bloody Claudio is famous for as one of the top five demon slayers. Claudio grinned and asked again whether his merits had really reached the master. After this, Claudio attacked again, saying that he would now add killing the demon lord to his achievements. Seeing how Fried deftly avoided attacks, Claudio asked him how long the lord could do this. Once on top, Fried announced that he might not do this. After this, Fried multiplied his swords and attacked the shocked Claudio with a dark crusher spell. Claudio froze in shock, wondering if this was... As soon as the bloody Claudio's sword crumbled, he asked about the magic intended for destruction. Descending to the ground, Freed asked if Claudio was giving up, to which he growled, calling the lord a coward who uses magic. Claudio then told Fried to fight with his bare hands like a man, to which Fried said that there was no point in waving his bandura. Fried then said it didn't matter and told Claudio to attack. Claudio called Freed a fool and growled that no one could handle him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Freed grabbed the trembling Claudio's fist and stopped him abruptly, asking him what he said. Claudio tried to escape, but Freed abruptly threw the huge thug over his shoulder. Bloody Claudio sighed in surprise and then screamed loudly, asking someone to save him. Freed attacked the hero again. After some time, Freed tied the bloody Claudio with chains and assumed that this was enough. Stella was silent because of excitement. Freed also hung a sign around Claudio's neck with the inscription that the hero begged the demon lord to spare his life, and he spared him. Claudio shouted sharply, telling Fried not to become arrogant, because there were four more heavenly heroes nearby. Claudio shouted that even the demon lord could not cope with them. Claudio also said that in three months they would attack again, so Fried should run in fear and wait for punishment. Freed confidently told Claudio to tell his guild that the Demon Lord would not forgive anyone who harmed its inhabitants. Freed noticed that compared to his strength, these heroes are just trash. Fried said that no matter who, even the gods. With these words, Freed hit Claudio again and sent him outside the barrier. After a certain period of time, Fried looked carefully at the gravestone and told Stella Azarween to leave the rest to him, and she herself could rest. Stella Azervain called Fried by name and reported that the external barrier had been successfully restored. Fried glanced to the side and said that this was a good chance to rest, but they needed to move on. Fried assumed that their next opponent would be the strongest among the heroes. After some time, Stella Azervain screamed loudly, informing all the demons that it was a triumphant victory. Continuing to fly on the dragon with Freed, Stella Azervain raised her hand up and confidently shouted that Demon Lord Freed had successfully regained his triumph. 
fried himself at this time, nervously bulged his eyes and asked Stella Azerwine why she was so happy. As she was about to blow the horn, Stella Azervain blushed slightly with embarrassment and said that when it comes to the return of the Demon Lord, everyone usually shouts and celebrates, but since all the troops are now returning home, then Stella Azervain thought that at least she should be happy. To which Fried said that everything is fine, and the demoness does not need to force herself. Fried looked to the side and hesitantly called Stella Azerwein by name, simultaneously asking that she said that everyone should be at home, but isn't it too noisy there? Stella looked to the side, but still couldn't find what to answer. At this time, the demoness carefully watched the dragon in the sky. As soon as Fried descended from the dragon, the demoness hugged him tightly and screamed loudly, congratulating his majesty on his return. An irritated Stella Azervain addressed the demoness as a Lilum officer, politely asking her to be polite when addressing the demon lord. After this, Stella Azervain began asking the demons why they were here, since it was not working hours. To which Officer Lilum said that they were worried. The other demons immediately shouted joyfully, congratulating His Majesty Fried on his return. Fried froze and widened his eyes in surprise, asking the demons whether they were really waiting for him. To which one of the demonesses asked with horror what happened to the human invasion. Fried showed a thumbs-up gesture and confidently announced that everything was fine. The demons immediately screamed joyfully. Fried blushed slightly, thinking to himself that he was a little embarrassed by all of this. Suddenly, Stella Azervain stood in front of Freed and furrowed her eyebrows, shouting that she understands that the demons want to congratulate His Majesty Freed, but Stella Azervain politely asks the demons to show more restraint since Freed is their lord. The demons pouted. Freed walked up to Stella Azervain and smiled slightly, indicating that he thought the atmosphere here was quite good. Stella Azervain immediately became nervous and quietly asked Frieda about manners. His Majesty Fried said that respect is important, but raising the morale of the troops is also necessary. Fried also said he doesn't think there's a need to change his tune. Stella Azerwain blushed slightly and scratched her chin thoughtfully, indicating that she understood Fried. Having straightened out, Stella bowed slightly to Fried and said in a confident voice that since His Majesty Fried had approved the celebration, Stella Azervain took back her words. Stella then asked for forgiveness from Fried and other subjects. Officer Lillam clenched her fists and said with joy in her voice that even though Stella Azervain was their boss, they still loved her impartiality. Stella Azervain immediately blushed with embarrassment and asked in a trembling voice not to tease her. Fried, at this time, turned to himself to God and said that here, among the demons, there are a lot of good guys. Suddenly Fried froze and frowned. Turning his head to the side, the young man saw joyful demons congratulating him on his return. Fried concluded to himself that he felt hostility for just a second, but the young man was absolutely sure that he felt it. Stella confidently began to tell the other demons that they had also received information that people were preparing another invasion. Stella Azervain then told the demons to make sure they were prepared for emergencies. Fried continued to think to himself about that feeling of hostility and wondered what it was. After some time, Fried and Stella were sitting in the office of the newly minted Demon Lord. A tired Demon Lord, Freed, folded his hands in front of him and announced that they now needed to make sure that their defenses were ready for the invasion. After this, His Majesty Freed asked Stella Azervain about how strong they were now. Stella Azervain immediately reported that their army was commanded by seven generals, each of whom had an entire company under his command. Forming a magical sphere with pieces that looked like chess pieces, Stella Azervain revealed that all of her subordinates were part of the national administration, so they had many important soldiers. However, Stella Azervain also noticed that there was a problem, which was that in the previous battle, three companies were destroyed and their commanders were killed. Saying all this, Stella poured the chips onto the table and placed one of the pieces. His Majesty Fried moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and thoughtfully concluded aloud that this meant that together with Stella Azervain, there were only four generals left. Stella Azervain began to talk about how the companies called Gigantro and Lord of the Dead were now missing, as they were in the thick of the battle during the previous invasion. Stella Azervain also reported that after the last battle with the heroes, the location of the company called Deadly Charm is unknown. 
Demon Lord Fried immediately tensed up and asked Stella Azervane slightly rudely that it was bad that the demons from that company were not clear where. Stella Azerwine opened her third eye and then poked her index finger at it with the words that Stella Azerwine's I could not find that same company and its general. Stella Azervane immediately explained that this is due to the company's abilities since it can hide in a separate space from their demon world and the human world. Stella Azervane also reported that she believes the company is now recovering from its injuries. After listening to Stella Azervane, Demon Lord Fried knitted his eyebrows and thoughtfully concluded that, in other words, now the only general here is Stella Azervane, and the number of demon troops is incredibly small. A drop of cold sweat appeared on Demon Lord Fried's face as he announced out loud that they were now in a very dangerous situation. After this, Fried began to think about tactics to defend against an imminent invasion. Offering different options, Fried said that when the heroes attack, it will be impossible for the Stella Azervain company to attack them all alone. Having said this, Fried put one of the chips on the map and said that there was too much free space around the castle, so that one person could not protect all directions. Fried also assumed that enemies would probably attack from all sides, just like last time. Covered with drops of cold sweat, Stella Azervane scratched her chin and said in a hesitant voice that even as a demon lord, if Freed planned to do without killing, this would add difficulties to the demons. Fried leaned his elbows on the chair and sighed heavily, reporting that this is why distributing all remaining troops along the perimeter would be the best way out. Stella Azervane smiled slightly and took one chip in her hand, and then bent over the card and began to move the chip with the words that the companies called Gigantro and Lord of the Dead had sent a message about their imminent return to hell. Stella Azervane also suggested that if they returned soon, Stella Azervane and Freed might be able to work something out. Demon Lord Fried sighed heavily again and moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose, saying that all he could do now was prepare troops. There was an awkward silence. Suddenly, a thoughtful Frid asked Stella Azervane about what kind of work the Demon Lord usually does. Stella Azervane smiled sweetly and said that these were official requests, budget distribution, and other official matters. Demon Lord Fried leaned into the stack of papers and said that even if these were official documents, he would not be able to read the Demon language. However, suddenly the young man froze and looked carefully at the papers. A second later, Fried asked in shock that he could really read it. Breaking into a nervous smile, Fried looked at Stella Azerwine and said that, although there were some words here, the young man himself did not understand. Stella Azervane looked to the side and said in a calm voice that understanding the politics of hell and its economics would indeed be a difficult task without the relevant experience. Fried looked at Stella Azervane with hope when the demoness said that in this case, she could help the newly minted demon lord Freed with what the young man did not understand in the documents. Stella Azerwine also informed Fried that, for now, he could focus on his studies. Clenching her fists, Stella Azervane said in a confident voice that she would be on the side of the demon lord Fried and would teach him. Suddenly, demon lord Freed took Stella Azerwine's hand and squeezed it lightly, and then shouted loudly that he would count on Stella Azerwine. Stella Azervane froze and blushed sharply at Fried's sudden actions. Demon Lord Fried looked away in embarrassment and blushed slightly, announcing in an excited voice that he had decided to carry the burden of the Demon Lord, so that the young man could no longer fail his residence simply because he did not have the knowledge. Surprised, Stella Azervane froze and looked attentively at Fried. However, then Stella Azervane broke into a wide smile and announced that she understood everything. After that, Stella Azerween, with a smile on her face, said that the training would be a little difficult, but she suggested that she and Fried try hard. After a certain period of time, the demon lord Freed actively fought with a sacred remote weapon in the form of a centaur, which belonged to one of the heroes. When the huge centaur began to press Fried, the young man furrowed his eyebrows and began to talk thoughtfully about how there was an automatic sacred weapon here. Fried suggested that he probably shouldn't rely on magic too much. Suddenly, Fried heard a loud scream from Stella Azervane, who was calling his majesty Frieda and shouting that they had evacuated all civilians. Demon Lord Fried immediately praised Stella Azervane for her good work and ordered her to retreat. After these words, Frieda, the automatic monster that was a sacred weapon, again tried to attack the young man. 
As the centaur-shaped sacred weapon opened its mouth, Demon Lord Fried heard the loud voice of one of the elite heroes, who spoke about how the demon race must be destroyed. After this, the automatic centaur commanded the rest of the heroes, ordering them to begin the bombardment, and he himself released a powerful stream of bright energy. However, the Demon Lord Fried formed a powerful stream of bright energy, and in a stern voice announced that the one who would disappear was the very hero who controlled the sacred automatic weapon. Saying all these words, Demon Lord Fried released a powerful stream of bright energy. Looking at all this, the excited Sauce Balgamug became covered in drops of cold sweat from tension, and wondered in shock that the Demon Lord Fried was really able to reflect the ray of the hero's sacred weapon. Sasam Balgamug could not believe her eyes. Demon Lord Fried, at this time, put his hand with the sword in front of him and prepared for a new attack. However, after a few moments, Freed's eyes widened in surprise, and he concluded that he apparently could not use this magic during battle. Looking at the huge pit with the sacred weapon at the bottom, Freed noticed that all this was only because the effect of this magic would simply destroy the cities and the castle itself. Suddenly, Stella Azervain appeared behind the demon Lord Frida and, calling the young man Her Majesty, said words of gratitude to him. Freed turned in surprise towards Stella Azervain and froze. Sasim Balgamug, seeing Stella Azervain, shuddered slightly and announced that she would return to her duties. Demon Lord Fried immediately shouted, asking Sasim Balgamug whether she would really work after this. Sasim Balgamug broke out in drops of cold sweat and froze. However, the Demon Lord Fried broke into a slight smile and said that he also needed to do some work. Sasim Balgamug asked the Demon Lord Fried not to overdo his work. Slightly blushing, Sasim Balgamug lowered her ears and thoughtfully scratched her chin, saying that it was true that His Majesty Fried had been working non-stop for several days. Sasim Balgamug thought that His Majesty Fried would do well to take a break. As Sasim Balgamug left Frieda, she raised her hand and confidently shouted that, if anything, she had a plan. After a certain period of time, His Majesty Fried stood in the middle of the banquet hall with a glass of sparkling wine in his hand and said that he thought that this would really be a break, but all the demon subjects were so dressed up. Looking around at the joyful and feasting demons, His Majesty Fried smiled slightly and concluded that this banquet would pass for a weekend, although Fried himself usually drinks alone on weekends. Suddenly, someone approached His Majesty Fried and asked if he was enjoying the moment. Freed froze for a second, and then turned back and saw a smiling Stella Azervain in a luxurious dress. His Majesty Freed widened his eyes in surprise and froze again. Stella Azerwein put an empty glass of sparkling wine on the table, and, with a smile on her face, asked the young man if something had happened. Demon Lord Fried answered in an uncertain voice that nothing had happened, and then said that this dress just suits Stella Azerwein. Stella Azervain put her hands on her skirt and bowed slightly to His Majesty Freed, simultaneously saying words of gratitude to the young man for these words. A slightly embarrassed Stella Azerwain also said that she was honored to receive such a compliment. At the same second, Officer Lilum and other demonesses appeared behind the demon Lord Frieda. Officer Lilum loudly called His Majesty Frieda and asked if the young man would like to have a drink. Surprised, the demon Lord Freed widened his eyes slightly and said that he wanted to say, let's start, but it seemed that the demon subjects had already started drinking. Officer Lillum blushed slightly and said that, like ordinary soldiers, they were thinking of sneaking here and eating some goodies. Another blushing demoness, who had just recently had a serious wound on her stomach, said in surprise that His Majesty Fried had invited them. The third joyful demoness simply smiled widely. Demon Lord Fried said in a calm voice that he simply decided to thank these soldiers. The already slightly tipsy officer Lilum blushed and sharply grabbed His Majesty Fried by the hand, and then asked again whether the Demon Lord Fried really remembered this. Then the joyful officer Lilum thanked His Majesty Frida for this. Seeing all these actions of Officer Lilum, Stella Azervain walked up to her and moved her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose. Grabbing Officer Lillum by the shoulder, Stella Azervain loudly called her name and reported that Officer Lillum was being rude. Officer Lillum, who had been drinking, smiled contentedly and called Stella Azervain by name in a polite voice. Stella Azervain furrowed her eyebrows and put her index finger in front of her, loudly shouting at the Lillum officer with the words that she told the demoness about this. Stella Azervain then screamed loudly, telling Officer Lillum not to bother His Majesty Freed. 
to which Officer Lillam, relaxed because of the drinks she had drunk, told Stella Azerwine with a smile on her face that His Majesty Fried seemed to be not against it. While saying all this, Officer Lillam pointed her index finger at Demon Lord Fried. Stella Azervain looked up at His Majesty Frieda and saw how two other demonesses in revealing dresses held the young man by the arms and flirted with him. One of these demonesses spoke words of gratitude to His Majesty Fried for saving her younger brother that day. The other demoness grinned and added words of gratitude for saving her little sister. Seeing all this, Stella Azerwing blushed deeply and opened her mouth in shock. Looking closely at how the demonesses rubbed against His Majesty Frida, Stella Azervain began to wonder if this was normal. Stella Azervain began to think to herself that all the books she read as a child talked about avoiding touching and serving the demon lord without violating his personal space. After this, the embarrassed Stella Azervain began to think that these demons, celebrity girls, who would make anyone blush. Seeing a pensive Stella Azervain, Officer Lillam approached her with a large mug of beer and asked if she would like a drink. To which Stella Azervain clenched her fists and screamed loudly that she wanted this. Having finished talking with those famous demonesses, His Majesty Fried waved his hand to them and with a smile on his face said that he hoped that these beauties would have a pleasant evening at the banquet. Suddenly, Demon Lord Fried glanced to the side and raised his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose. Looking around at the banquet tables with his subjects, the attention of His Majesty Fried was attracted by the creepy demonic deer bear and horse with mugs of beer, as well as the cute demonic rabbit who was eating meat with those demons with a smile on her face. Demon Lord Fried waved his hand and used his magic to activate an ability called Hearing Enhancement. As soon as His Majesty Freed activated this ability, he heard one of those very disgruntled demons speak rudely about the Demon Lord Freed, calling him a brat. That demon was also indignant that His Majesty Freed was so narcissistic that he even threw this whole party. After taking a sip of beer from his mug, the demonic horse bared its teeth and wondered in an angry voice whether Demon Lord Freed thought too much of himself just because a couple of civilians loved him. The rabbit looked at the demonic horse with concern and suggested not to talk about it here. The demonic bear reached for his mug of beer to take a sip, but then abruptly stopped and, closing his eyes, said that even if the demon Lord Freed heard them, the demon did not think that the young man would do anything. The demonic horse sighed loudly and suggested that, apparently, the demon Lord Freed did not particularly meddle in politics. After this, the demonic horse snorted loudly and called His Majesty Frieda a simple weakling. The demon rabbit pricked a piece of meat on her fork and pulled it towards her mouth, but then stopped and said something that although she thought it would be good if the demon's lives were peaceful. Unable to bear the words of the demonic rabbit, the demonic horse screamed loudly, angrily asking the rabbit that she would really teach him the manners of beast people. The demonic rabbit immediately broke out in drops of cold sweat and refused in a nervous voice, citing the fact that this was not at all what she had in mind. The demonic deer bear sighed and interrupted his companions, informing him that, however, this does not change the fact that the crest chose Fried as the demon lord. The demonic horse sharply slammed his beer mug onto the table with the psycho, spilling the contents. Then the demonic horse moved his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and screamed loudly, asking his companion, the beastman, if he was going there too. After this, the demonic horse began to shout that their leader should be chosen according to the courage and strength that is shown in battle. The demon deer bear furrowed his brows and closed his eyes, calmly telling the demon horse not to worry as the crest would soon choose a new demon lord. The demonic rabbit looked at her interlocutor in surprise and asked how this would happen. To which the demonic deer bear briefly replied that he would tell about it next time. The tense fried looked away, and then relaxed slightly and scratched the back of his head with his hand, saying that he already knew that there was opposition. However, His Majesty Fried was still surprised that so soon one of the oppositionists began to plan to take away his throne. Demon Lord Fried concluded that he should probably discuss this with his assistant named Stella Azervain. While the demon Lord Fried was communicating with the famous demonesses and eavesdropping on the conversation of three oppositionists, Stella Azervain got completely drunk, almost to the point of unconsciousness. His Majesty Fried approached Stella Azervain, who was sitting on the floor, and the rest of the demonesses, who were immediately frightened when they saw the young man. His Majesty Fried loudly called Stella by name, and then looked from side to side at the demonesses and asked if Stella Azervain was okay. 
to which the tipsy officer Lillam sheepishly responded, reporting that she seemed to have gotten Stella Azervain a little drunk. Demon Lord Fried shuddered and noticed that, in fact, Stella Azervain was obviously drunk to the point of passing out. Officer Lillam blushed slightly and winked at His Majesty Freed, asking that since this was the case, maybe Demon Lord Freed would take Stella Azervain to her room. Continuing to wink, Officer Lillam pointed out that it would be best if Demon Lord Freed carried Stella Azervain on his back. Freed sighed heavily. After a certain period of time, Fried and Stella Azervain walked along the corridor. Freed, at the insistence of Officer Lillam, still carried Stella Azervain on his back. Having sobered up a little, Stella Azerwein asked His Majesty Frieda for forgiveness in a quiet voice. The young man sighed and told his assistant Stella Azerwein not to worry about it, since Stella already works hard. Stella Azervain immediately objected, saying that it was her duty to work hard. Fried said that when he was a hero, he could not rely on anyone. Stella Azervain looked at Demon Lord Fried with slight sadness. Calling him Freedom Sama, Stella Azervain smiled slightly and said that despite his experiences and regrets, Freed still decided to save the demons and fight his former comrades, the heroes. Continuing to smile warmly, Stella Azervain said that she wondered how many more people in the world would do this. Stella Azervain reminded Fried that people now consider him a traitor, and demons consider him a murderer of their former master. Stella Azervain noted that this imposes responsibility, but she has already decided that she will always be on the side of the demon Lord Fried and will support him. After this, Stella Azervain put her arm around Freed's neck and said that she was not saying this as an advisor to the demon Lord, but as a member of the demon people. Stella Azervain swore allegiance to the demon Lord Freed. Muffling her voice a little, Stella Azervain began to beg Fried for something and said that she would do anything. Freed tensed up a little and called Stella Azerwain's name. Stella Azerwain instantly broke out in drops of cold sweat, and severe nausea rose in her throat due to the amount of alcohol she had drunk. Freed's eyes widened in shock, and then he screamed loudly, asking Stella Azerwain how she was feeling and whether she was feeling sick. After that, Freed shouted loudly, asking Stella where the bathroom was. The next day, an embarrassed Stella Azerwain bowed to Freed and loudly asked for forgiveness for yesterday's incident, saying that she was sorry. Fried asked Stella Azerwain if she was okay now. Stella Azerwain straightened out and said that she was already much better. Stella Azerwain then walked closer to Freed and handed him a small stack of papers with the words that, as the young man had asked, it was a list of potential traitors. Having examined the list, Freed noticed that all potential traitors were subordinates of Zegarth, the Lord of the Beastmen. Fried asked Stella Azervain whether those potential traitors were part of the troops sent to capture the world of people. Stella frowned and said that in the past, Lord Zegarth was also a candidate for the position of Demon Lord. She began to talk about how initially, the current Demon Lord himself determined the candidate for the place of the new Demon Lord. Zegarth was one of these candidates, but then Eurisha Sama was chosen as the next Lord. However, as it seemed to Stella Azervain, apparently Zagart's desire to take the throne did not go away, but he was again not elected. After listening to her, Fried asked about the chance that Zagart and his subordinates would try to take the throne. Stella reported that this was possible, but Zagarth had been acting suspiciously for a long time, including during the battle with the people when none of his warriors entered the battle. Fried sighed and concluded that Zagart would definitely cause problems. Fried also noticed that this world is not much different from the human one. Stella Azervain announced that she will be watching Zegarth with her third eye. After this, Stella promised to inform Fried if Zegarth did anything suspicious. After a certain period of time, the demons were preparing for battle with the beastmen. Fried looked around and reported that the beast people decided not to wait, and they were apparently in a hurry. After that, Fried waved his hand and ordered the soldiers to reconnoiter and surround the area. Freed, at this time, reactivated his ability to enhance hearing magic and began to listen to what the opposition was saying. The demonic horse, meanwhile, asked his friend about the remains of the hero's magical tools, to which he replied that, with their help, they would make the leader of Zagarth the next ruler. The demonic rabbit reported that these tools could cause a huge explosion so they could place them under Freed's bed. However, the beast girl noticed that his majesty Fried would die. The beast people replied sternly that this was the plan. One of them told the beast girl not to worry, 
as everyone would think of the heroes. The rabbit immediately said that that was not what she was talking about. She then said that she also wants Zegart Sama to become an overlord, but she thinks that killing Friel is wrong. The rabbit offered to challenge Fried to a fair duel. Unable to bear it, the horse grabbed her and growled at the rabbit, asking her about the fact that she calls herself a beastman. The beast girl nervously asked to stop, because she was in pain. Suddenly, there was a loud explosion that destroyed the building. The beastmen cursed, not understanding what was happening. Seeing Demon Lord Fried, they screamed in shock, not understanding why he was here. Freed looked sternly at the beastmen and said that he knew everything about them. The beastmen tensed when they saw the other demons surrounding them. Freed sank to the ground and said that he had questions for the beast people. Fried also noted that they were surrounded and would not be harmed if they surrendered. The rabbit smiled tensely and said that Freed would not harm them. Beastman sighed and said that it seemed like they had no choice. However, the horse shouted that it was his time to show himself and was about to attack Fried. The rabbit asked if he was joking. The bear reminded them that they had decided to give up. However, upon hearing the strange sound, the demonic horse suddenly froze, as did the rest of the beastmen and demons. Suddenly, two demonesses in maid costumes appeared behind the beastmen and said in an eerie voice that those who do not obey the king must die. After that, they sharply bit the beastmen. The soldiers screamed in shock that they were draining the energy from the beastmen. The rabbit became nervous, reminding Fried that he had said that they would not be touched. Freed shouted that this was not his order. Seeing something spinning behind the rabbit's back, Fried took her hand and took her to the side, saving her. However, the sharp sword sharply pierced the beast girl right through. Freed and the rabbit froze in shock, followed by the rest of the demons. The beast girl began to fall, losing a lot of blood. Freed looked forward and saw a huge skeletal demon rising from a pool of blood, flanked by those same demoness maids.